Thank you very much, Dr. Grace. And uh, my part will be the shortest one. I'll be uh, looking at how the literature actually points to uh, um, certain things that law schools can do, that the program can do, legal education can do. Um, and, and with the help of the data that we have gathered, um, this one will also help us direct um, um, our study to award uh, the conclusion that could actually have good implications for legal education. So um, in the literature, it says that um, there are three things that um, we need to look into when we um, um, move on uh, uh, in legal education uh, after getting all of these data and results. First would be that uh, there needs to be uh, uh, we need to have academic reforms in legal education, and that, that's what we're doing now. And then we need to invest in the wellness of law students. And uh, what's very important is that it's not only the institution that should provide that should provide um, certain mechanisms and programs for uh, student wellness. But it should also be the students themselves. So, which means that if we go to the next slide, uh, we have to look at the three-pronged approach here for uh, looking at uh, uh, programs that we can uh, um, establish in legal education moving forward and following all the data that we have here as well as the literature. And that we need to look at, yes, psychosocial support. This would mean programs for uh, students and uh, even the faculty you know, that uh, will look into their mental well-being, the wellness, right? Even simple, um, simple activities that could be done in law school. I was watching the Facebook Live last night on the arts, the arts uh, merging with law, law, law schools, uh, which was done by the students, uh, the Lip Fellows, and I was really amazed at how uh, that would actually be one of those programs that we could think of uh, to, to help uh, in this, uh, in this uh, particular endeavor. And then, of course, academic reforms, which LEAP is doing, right? Uh, we are doing the model syllabi uh, pro program and project. We are looking at how we could actually uh, um, uh, look at uh, certain parts of the curriculum that could be uh, uh, merged together to lighten the, the to lighten or to make it more integrative or uh, more relevant to uh, legal education now. And of course, many other academic reforms that have to do with the use of the introduction of the use of varied teaching methodologies and strategies, right? And we're happy to have been doing this, to have done this in LEAP, in the LSCP program that we had in the MOOC. And uh, our MOOC participants here could attest to that that we could actually teach um, a topic in, law, in a law uh, course using varied methodologies and that the students actually were more engaged, right? So we were more engaged when uh, these varied strategies were used. So we could look into that. And then the third one, of course, is the individual intention, which is really the intention of the student. This means that there should also be, be mechanisms that would um, empower the students, encourage the students to look after their own mental health. So it's not always just the provision by the institution of uh, psychosocial support or even academic uh, reforms and interventions, but it's also having mechanisms in legal education that would encourage students to look after their mental health. Okay, so uh, this would be uh, uh, guiding us in the um, uh, future, the, the recommendations that we'll be giving um, on from this study that we're doing. And I give you now again to Attorney Rene Fopalan for the conclusion. Thank you, Pop. To wrap up, uh, we would like to remind everyone that, of course, like we said, this is a work in progress. Um, we need more participants to fine tune our results. But as we've seen through the discussion of our three experts, there is a need to help students learn better as they are juggling a lot of responsibilities. Um, they have to develop study skills because learning the law requires higher order thinking skills. This is not just, we always say this all the time in our discussions with LEAP. Our tests should not be asking you to recall what are the elements of what. 
they should be able to test you and ask you how concepts in law are integrated and how can they be integrated. Those are the levels, the higher level thinking skills and higher level questions that we should be able to ask our students. Regarding the, the evening students, as Dr. Grace mentioned, we would like to recommend that perhaps law schools not only just give men, um, financial aid, but also try to find, help these students find work opportunities that are law school friendly. Here in QC, here in UP, a lot of our working students work in Congress because Congress is very law school friendly. You get to sneak in, sneak in a reading or two all of the time. In the provinces, the, some of the LECP participants, they talked about how they have staff in courts who are also law students because who will be able to take care of law students? Those who are also in the law profession. Those who, are, who, those who can allow their, their staff to say, it's okay, you can take like three, two to three hours off. You have, you have midterms, you can study. So we have to help them find these kinds of work opportunities. Now, students that have high neuroticism, as Dr. Gray said, are at risk for mental health issues. What we need to do is to help them teach, uh, to help teach them problem-solving skills and how to regulate their emotions without the need, of, need for substances. We always do this. We all went through this. After a bad law school day, people drink, people smoke, people do other things. It, it, it was how it was before, it is how it is now. But it would be wonderful to find other coping mechanisms that do not include substances, even caffeine, you know, because we're all caffeinated to the max to here. <laughs> okay. Also, we want to discuss resiliency porn. I know resiliency porn is something that the, the younger participants here know about. They always talk about resiliency porn when it comes to natural disasters. To our other friends who are not aware of what resiliency porn is, it was um, defined as any type of media, written, photographed, or filmed, that overly romanticizes the people's adaptability and resilience, packaging adversities as experiences of individuals and not of society as a whole. It avoids addressing the systemic crisis that gives people the need to adapt and become resilient in the first place. It reinforces toxic positivity, passes the burden to the individual, and evades the responsibility of the institution to the student. So there's a lot of resiliency porn, not just when it comes to, to floods in the Philippines. There's a lot of resiliency porn in law school. We, after the bar, you see people taking pictures of themselves with the readings as tall as them or even taller. That's something that I know you've all seen on your Facebook. Students wear traumatic or unhealthy experiences in law school, like a badge of honor or a bonding point with peers. So you stood up for five hours for your reset. Yes, yeah, that's cool, but that's also unhealthy. And clearly, since you've been talking about it for the past 20 years, it has clearly affected your psyche in the long run. So that's something that we would like everyone to consider, that it shouldn't be that way. We should also reevaluate the volume of content being fed to the students. This is where LECP helps and how they can continue to help. They can help us make tighter syllabi. We know that the syllabi get longer and longer because they don't edit. So the, what was a seven-page syllabi is now a 17-page syllabi because they didn't, mean, uh, they didn't even try to take out the stuff that are not supposed to be there anymore. But you weren't supposed to read all the cases in the 17-page syllabi in the first place. So tighter syllabi, of course, that's what we, were hel what we hope to have through the LECP to so show your professors can also learn how to make those. Um, Oh, removing redundant cases, like I said, in the tightening syllabi, put them premium on efficiency, and testing what needs to be tested. I will die on this hill about testing. We are not testing the right things, and we should continue towards pushing for better testing in law schools. We are not testing the right things, and students are still being made to enumerate 
what movables what what are movables and immovables so that's not something that we should be taking our time to memorize um isang pasintabi sometimes law professors young and old they romanticize the poor academic conditions they went through but that doesn't mean that they have to subject the students to the same because the mark of a good professor is to facilitate learning painlessly there's a painless way to do things and i think the fact that you are here it shows that you are committed to the painless way and again we have to help schools buy into committing to to better instructional design reading all of the things that we read it shouldn't be that way or it can be adapted better there are better ways to consume the things that we consume we shouldn't just take pictures of the fact that we have 24 cases for today okay so materials need to improve or at least we have to find a better way of consuming these materials because if we do not address these issues we will have of course like doc grace and the team pointed out more serious problems the problem of mental health is crippling and if left unaddressed it will surely have a serious impact on the practice of our profession and we hope this study will encourage our stakeholders here present to play a more active role in improving the conditions our current and future lawyers are subjected to again we thank the leap team mam tanya everyone for giving us free reign in working on these research endeavors this is also an open call to our friends and pals law deans who want to study specific topics that affect their schools and their students it doesn't end here po the leap research team is committed to helping everyone so you may approach us at any time today or tomorrow and we would be glad to assist you all in the development of educational programs in your law schools and again po maraming salamat po for the opportunity and good morning po to all